it's not difficult to see the ways that 343's return to the Halo form took obvious inspiration from Bungie's Halo Combat Evolved from 2001. Everyone knows that these two games share a good amount of similarities, and I felt it would be a unique approach to take a deeper look at these two games side by side and discuss which did certain things better, where they each made mistakes, and maybe how future Halo games could incorporate aspects of both. So getting started, much of the fondness I hold for Halo Infinite comes from its callbacks to Halo Combat Evolved that I found throughout the game. I thought they were super fun and to a certain extent fused into the game's DNA. Halo Infinite was built from the ground up to really be an iteration on some of the things Halo Combat Evolved introduced. And this made Halo Infinite a much better game in my nostalgia driven opinion. The most obvious comparison to make is the way that Halo Infinite and its open world design is often summed up as the level Halo from Combat Evolved spread out into an entire game. And this statement is certainly accurate. Anywhere and everywhere, the areas of Zeta Halo that can be traversed in Halo Infinite can very easily trace their roots to the San Francisco inspired biome found in the step out moment from Halo Combat Evolved. From the large pine trees, steep drop off cliffs, and array of mysterious forerunner structures, Halo Infinite very much took this idea and ran away with it. And this begs the question, who did it better? And honestly, I find it kind of hard to answer that question. Because on one hand, that mission from Halo Combat Evolved is iconic and certainly deserving of being expanded upon in a larger scale. Having more of the open-ended mission style within Halo CE would have been great, especially near the ending of the campaign where the backtracking along the rails of the previously explored areas could be tedious for some players. It would have given the game more replayability than it already has. And as far as Infinite goes in being that expansion to this experience, I would say it leans into it a bit too heavily. While it was great for the first few hours of exploring the ring and completing its objectives in a completely non-linear fashion, the entire game being made of this one biome, especially one so similar to areas we've seen in now two other Halo games, became pretty overbearing after a while. So while I commend Halo Infinite for the attempt to provide us with this great callback to an amazing component of Halo Combat Evolved, building the entire game experience around this one concept just kind of felt flat in its execution as it really made the whole game blend together as it really felt like just one long mission due to the lack of variety and the over-reliance on its open world elements. And that's another part of the CE versus Infinite discussion that should be mentioned. Halo Combat Evolved is often regarded highly for its large missions that allow the player to experiment with the sandbox in order to dispatch enemies or go around them. There was a delicate mixture of these large open spaces with the mission Halo or Silent Cartographer allowing a more open order of completing the objectives. While the other open missions felt large, they still had the player following a linear path these are missions such as Assault on the Control Room. Infinite leaned a bit too heavily on the open world concept for it to feel as satisfying. While it did have a set of linear missions, I feel the game was so all or nothing with mission structure being fully open or fully linear. What Halo CE was able to accomplish was a mixture of these elements evenly spread throughout the game where nothing felt stale or overly repeated. Especially given the fact that enemy variety would constantly change throughout the game offering a varied experience. Infinite lacked the same nuance in both mission structure and enemy variety, and oddly enough, it kind of feels as though the cause of this was the attempt to scale back, as 343 scaled maybe just a bit too far back, and kept things too simple throughout the game's runtime. Mostly, Halo Infinite suffers from a lack of variety in its campaign. That label can be applied to almost everything, varieties in enemy types, variety in unique locations, variety in different environments, variety in mission structure. The only aspect that has a good amount of fun variety are the amounts of weapons the player has at their disposal. And I want to reiterate that I like Halo Infinite. What this game takes from Halo Combat Evolved and really brings to life are the aspects of the art style. And I know I've said in the past that art style is subjective and not worth debating when deciding what makes or breaks a Halo game. Meaning what I'm about to say is completely open to individual interpretation and not something that objectively makes Infinite a great game. But man does this game look good. 
This game feels more Halo to me than even Halo 3. <laughs> Most of my attachment to this franchise is with Halo Combat Evolved specifically. So the way that Halo Infinite has incorporated these aesthetics into their game, it feels more like home. It feels more like Halo to me. And I really, really hope that someday we can get a full-sized, fully complete Halo narrative with this art direction and the continued callbacks to CE's world building with different weather types, different biomes, and possibly different planets. They just really nailed it out of the park with this aspect, even incorporating aspects found from Halo 2 and 3 very seamlessly into this style that is still most likely going to be compared to Halo Combat Evolved. A strength that both Halo Infinite and Halo CE take advantage of is a more simplistic story style. Both games don't overcomplicate their plots for the sake of creating a spectacle. The plot of both games is driven by the Chief having a seemingly simplistic goal, beating a bad guy, <laughs> against disastrous odds, that then the objective to complete this goal changes multiple times as new information is learned and new threats or obstacles arrive and must be dealt with. The missions change. They always do. What Halo Infinite does a bit better here is how it incorporates some character development between its cast, allowing the story to be more emotional and ultimately impactful. Halo Combat Evolved was truly meant to be more of an action story where the player is meant to connect to the story through their experience with the gameplay. And that was executed very well, especially given its release date. And I think both ways of delivering a Halo narrative are viable and have the capability to be very captivating when executed correctly. In Infinite's case, where the lack of diversity in design hurts the campaign, the game shines in its story told through its cutscenes. I really liked the story Halo Infinite told and thought the game's cutscenes and voice acting were phenomenal. This aspect of the game is what carried me through, even when the open world could feel repetitive, and it still carries my positive opinions of this game. To directly compare the ways Halo CE and Infinite deliver their stories isn't exactly fair as they both try to do different things. Taking this look makes me think that the best Halo game would be one that tried to truly mix these aspects. And to be clear, while Halo CE does deliver information about the game's plot in its cutscenes, I feel that what those scenes deliver is the surface level information as to where you're going and why. Any true emotion the player feels while playing Halo Combat Evolved comes through its gameplay and the environmental storytelling, the mixture of music and ambience. That's where the player in Halo CE really feels what they're supposed to feel. Whereas in Halo Infinite, while it can momentarily capture that environmental storytelling aspect, both its plot information and emotional drive felt by the player come from its cutscenes. And that's not a bad thing. As I said before, I think its cutscenes do this very effectively. And so does Halo CE within its environments. I feel that an amazing Halo game could be possible that maximizes both of these forms of conveying emotions to a player to make a very strong experience. A story that delivers great characters from their motives, development, and emotions from both within well choreographed cutscenes as well as moments popping up within the gameplay and also creating detailed environments very specifically crafted to make players feel a certain way accompanied by music and ambient sound design that forces the player to reflect on what the characters in game are feeling at that point in the narrative and that's ultimately what i want from a deep look comparing halo infinite and halo combat evolved rather than deciding some sort of winner taking a close look at what made each of these games good in their own ways and creating discourse on how those ideas could come together and make an amazing future Halo game is the goal. Creating a game that effectively uses these strengths to its advantage while learning from the mistakes of the last 25 years of Halo should be the goal that Halo fans strive for when comparing the different games. But let me know what you think below. What aspects of these games do you like? Which game told a better story? And if you're curious about my thoughts on Halo 2 and 3 as I didn't talk about them much here, on screen now is my video covering the original Halo trilogy. Thanks for watching.